Moving on to the next example, find the equation of a cubic function f of x with x-intercepts negative 5, negative 1, and 3, and where f of 2 is equal to 3. So we have to give the equation of a cubic function, and since it's a polynomial function, we can give it in two forms. We could either give it in factored form or expanded form. And with the information given, since they're giving us the x-intercepts already, it's a lot easier to work with factored form because we could figure out what each of these brackets is. We can also figure out uh, the a, b, c, and d in expanded form by plugging these in, making y equal to zero, and then plugging this point in, and then solving for a, b, c, and d, but that'll take us a long time. We'll have four equations with four unknowns, so it's easier to just go with the factored form. So we're given the x-intercepts of negative 5, negative 1, and 3, and we have to figure out what each of these brackets are. So what we would do is we would bring over the 5, and we'd have x plus 5 is equal to 0. So we know that x plus 5 is one of the brackets. Usually what happens is we're given the brackets, and we have to find the x-intercepts. So we make 0 equal to y, and then we're given this bracket, and then we have to solve for when it's equal to 0, and we get the x-intercept of negative 5. This time we're working backwards. We're given the x-intercept of negative 5, and then we have to figure out what that bracket would be in the factored form uh, polynomial. So x is equal to negative 1 that's the same as x plus 1 is equal to 0 if we bring the negative 1 over. So that's another bracket. And then x is equal to 3. When we bring the 3 over, we'd have x minus 3 is equal to 0. So that's the other bracket. So let's fill those in. So we got y equals a, the uh, constant in front, x plus 5, x plus 1, and x minus 3. So these three brackets here represent these three x-intercepts. And now we have to solve for what that a value in front would be. And we're given that this cubic function is going to go through this point f of 2 equals 3. Now f of 2 equals 3, if you remember back to function notation, we can rewrite that as 2 and 3. That's just a coordinate right there. So this cubic function is going through this coordinate. So to solve for this a value, what we can do is we can plug in 2 for all the x's, and when x is equal to 2, then the y value is equal to 3. And then we'll just have one unknown, this a value, and then we can solve for it. So 3 equals a, 2 plus 5, 2 plus 1, and then 2 minus 3. And then Let's uh, simplify these brackets. So 3, so 3 equals 7 times 3 times negative 1 is negative 21. A divided by negative 21. So A is equal to 3 over negative 21, or negative 3 over 21, and that simplifies to negative 1 over 7. So our final equation of the cubic function, we would just plug in this a value here. So y equals negative 1 over 7, x plus 5, x plus 1, and uh, x minus 3. So that there is our final answer. Now let's show this graphically so you can better understand it. So this is a cubic function, so an odd degree. And if you were to expand this because this uh, a value is negative, it'll have a negative leading coefficient. So the end behaviors will be from quadrant 2 to quadrant 4. And then it's going through these x-intercepts of negative 5, negative 1, and positive 3. And at some point, it's going to go through this point here. 2 and 3. So they say that this point is on the function as well, so it would be right there. So that's approximately how this cubic function would look like.